If you grew up playing Mario Kart Double Dash and for whatever reason used Baby Mario or Baby Luigi, hey, I ain't judging. You're probably familiar with their special item, the Chain Chomp. It's like the precursor to the Bullet Bill, which has been a staple of the series since Mario Kart DS. These items are similar in the way that the game takes the wheel as it autopilots you in the general direction you're supposed to go. That's where the similarities come to an end. The Bullet Bill takes you on a streamlined, predictable, and honestly boring pathway. As for the Chain Chomp, all I can really say is... Jank. It wasn't until the year 2021 that this jankiness would be exploited once and for all. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Because this is the story behind Chain Chomp Shortcuts. The first shortcut ever discovered in Mario Kart Double Dash is about as old as the game itself. We're talking 2003 with the Waluigi Stadium launch into a death plane that places you further in the track trick. With how simple it is to pull off, it's really no wonder it was discovered almost immediately. I should go ahead and clarify that I'm using the term shortcuts to mean any skip that wasn't intended by the developers. It's widely known that Mario Kart is rife with clips and out-of-bounds shenanigans that cut out large portions of tracks, which is why it's impressive that there were only two known shortcuts in Double Dash for over 14 years, one of which is only possible in Grand Prix using a blue shell hop in Bowser's Castle. New shortcuts came around in late 2018 thanks to the ingenuity of a little player named Goomba. His first discovery was in Mushroom Bridge. After nearly completing one full lap, you would use a mushroom to fall off the track while still finishing the first lap. After respawning, you turn around and climb up the railing of the bridge. You would then use a second mushroom and time a drift in such a way that you cross a checkpoint on the other side of the track. If done properly, the lap should count when you cross the finish line. It was later discovered that the entire setup could be done without using mushrooms at all, which is especially good considering that, unlike Mario Kart 64, you lose your items after falling off the track. This shortcut requires insane levels of precision, but that didn't stop people from eventually pulling it off two times in a row. Uh, 106, 876, Mushroom Bridge, 3 lap. Oh. Well, that's what world yep. world record. Goomba also discovered the holy grail of Bowser's Castle shortcuts. It's possible in both Grand Prix and Time Trial mode, plus it made the track even shorter than Baby Park. The only downside being that it's insanely precise, but that's going to be a common theme here. Unlike every other Mario Kart game, hopping is not a mechanic in Double Dash. Pressing down the trigger and turning simply begins a drift. Instead, the trick relies on an artificial, or fake hop, which is why this shortcut is commonly referred to as the flop. After Lakitsu brings you back, a lap will hopefully be completed and you can go ahead and set up for the next one. That whole explanation was a deliberate oversimplification for the sake of pacing in this video. That brings us to 2021 and the latest shortcut discovery is still the flop. However, a few days into the year, a top-level Double Dasher named Mathy had a spark of inspiration. The inspiration to randomly fool around with chain chomps? Quite plainly, he wanted to see if anything cool would happen, just because it seemed like a janky item. His wishes of seeing something cool wouldn't go unanswered when on January 7th he posted a video titled, A New Way to Get Heights in MKDD. So right off the bat, that is a lot more heights than a measly blue shell would give you. What's funny about this trick is that the chain chomp detaches from the cart immediately after launching it upward. Normally, this can happen by getting hit by an item, but it can also get detached if it jerks too- Okay, hold on. <laughs> I should rephrase that. If it yanks too hard in a certain direction. And I'd say it's yanking pretty hard when it launches you into outer space. So what are the implications of this? As much as I hate to admit it, the babies are speedrun viable. Lightweight characters have the privilege of using the barrel train, which is the best cart for double dash speedrunning. Mathy, along with that cow guy, immediately began testing out where this trick could be useful. The first thing that was tested was the blue shell shortcut in Bowser's Castle, except with a chain chomp, and of course it works. This may seem pointless because why wouldn't you just use the blue shell, it has a much more reliable setup. You see, whenever a specific item is needed in Mario Kart, you gotta get lucky with the random number generator. I've got like the weird, terrible Royal Raceway RNG version of the game or something. Both the blue shell and chain chomp can be pulled if you're between 3rd and 8th place, at least according to this old guide from Mewtwo King. 
Yes, that mutes you, King. The actual chance you have of pulling a specific item is still a mystery, so we're just gonna assume that blue shells and chain chomps have an equal likelihood of being pulled. Regardless of the actual likelihood, the fact that now two items are viable is a substantial boost to your chances of getting what you need. Okay, but what about, like, new stuff, right? Now that I've hyped this up so much, allow me to most likely bore you and then disappoint you. It's time to explain the complex theory behind how these shortcuts work, and ludicrous requirements that will likely keep most of these in the realm of theoretical versus actually being useful. The reason that so many skips were found in such a short time span is mostly thanks to years of prior knowledge. Before I touch on some of that knowledge, it's crucial to understand the difference between Lakitu Zone and Out of Bounds. Lakitu Zones come in many forms like water, lava, into the abyss, up to the abyss, quicksand, you name it. These zones are programmed for Lakitu to place you at a specific respawn point relative to the checkpoint where you fell off. Generally, checkpoints follow a similar structure across the Mario Kart series. Each checkpoint is a small area that extends to the next checkpoint. They're ordered starting with checkpoint 0. Then there's 1, 2, and so on for however many checkpoints are in the track. So if falling off the track always leads to a Lakitu zone, what the heck could Out of Bounds mean? This is Rainbow Road. And this is the level geometry for Rainbow Road. What's immediately striking is these large rectangular areas below the actual track. As you might have already guessed, that's the collision for a Lakitu zone, which, if you're like me playing this game growing up, will be hit no less than 10 times by the time you finish this track. This off-track collision is pretty hard to avoid given its gargantuan size, but if you can somehow fall off the track in such a way that you avoid these zones, then that is out of bounds. In Mario Kart Double Dash, finding a way to go out of bounds is very special because rather than placing you at a nearby respawn point, Lakitu places you right behind the finish line. Gee, going out of bounds must be like the holy grail of Double Dash or something. Not exactly. While it does place you at the finish line, it doesn't count as finishing a lap. There are three conditions that must be met for a lap to count. 1. Be inside of checkpoint 0. 2. Have more total race completion than completed laps. And 3. The entire checkpoint bit field is set to true. The first condition is by far the most lenient. The zeroth checkpoint is always the one that immediately follows the finish line. So crossing the finish line completes a lap. Groundbreaking, I know. However, the other two parts of this list aren't nearly as forgiving. Race completion is a continuous value stored in memory that calculates exactly how far you are into a track. This value is what computer scientists refer to as a float, meaning it has decimal precision. In theory, race completion should go up by 1 every time a lap is completed, resulting in a value corresponding to the number of laps in the track. In theory. It's possible to have a race completion greater than 1 while you're still considered to be on lap 1. Much, much higher if you really wanted to. Mario Kart Wii has something known as the 95% rule, which Malio explains in a wonderful video of his. The gist of it is that the 95% rule was put into Mario Kart Wii as a failsafe to prevent game-breaking shortcuts and just see how well that turned out. That being said, Double Dash has its very own 50% rule. There's a failsafe that never allows you to skip more than 0.5 race completion in a single instant. This has significant implications for any out-of-bounds-ness. Going out-of-bounds during the first half of a lap will still place you at the finish line, but with a race completion of just below zero. Thanks to the 50% rule, you lose all your progress. The key is to go out of bounds at least halfway through a lap. This will round the race completion up to just below 1. Repeating this process over and over again will get you some crazy high race completion without completing any laps. On the surface, this seems totally pointless, but what I've just described is an essential part for some of these chain chomp shortcuts. This is known as out of bounds stacking. Stacking out of bounds was discovered by Double Dasher and former Club Penguin speedrunner Lothjohn. It was first revealed in an unlisted video titled Mushroom Bridge Out of Bounds Stacking. Using a levitation cheat code, Lothjohn starts by going out of bounds over and over again in locations that are over halfway through the track. 
After building up some raise completion, he levitates into a Lakati zone located in checkpoint 0, which allows him to then finish a lap. He's then able to do this two more times and finish the remaining two laps. Through out of bound stacking, he was able to build up enough race completion that every time he refreshes the checkpoint bit field by dying in checkpoint 0, he can still finish more laps. Again, this example is purely theoretical, but it's not far off from what's already possible with the previously mentioned Mushroom Bridge shortcut. The 50% rule is still followed because you gain less than 0.5 race completion between where you fall off and where Lakitu places you. In case you're not familiar with competitive Mario Kart time trials, every track has a category for completing the fastest singular lap, referred to as a flap. By remixing the Mushroom Ridge shortcut setup, you can achieve lap times in the range of what Lothjohn demonstrated. After almost completing one normal lap, you start by doing a bridge jump during lap 1. This will increase your race completion by 1 without having to do out of bounds storage. You can then hit a Lakitu zone right as you cross into checkpoint 0, respawn behind the checkpoints, and finish a lap in a matter of 4 seconds. Anyway, I think it's time to finally tackle these new shortcuts. What's funny is that this particular shortcut was theorized back in 2018. Matthew posted a video of the new shortcut being performed, but included an intro that calls back to Goomba's initial theory. So what are we missing here is an out of bounds. Going out of bounds over 50% through Dry Dry Desert was finally possible. From here, build up your race completion by driving an entire normal lap. Keep in mind, it's still lap 1, we're merely setting up for a flap. Finally, hit the Lakitu zone right as you cross in the checkpoint 0, in other words, the finish line. But like, how does this even work? Every checkpoint has a bit assigned to it. Whenever you reach a new checkpoint, a bit switches from 0 to 1. Finally, when the lap counter goes up, the game flushes the bit field, everything goes back to 0, and you rinse and repeat. Going out of bounds places you back at the finish line with the current bit field still intact. This makes the third requirements of lap completion impossible without driving an entire normal lap afterward. Though there is an exception. The way that respawn points work can be heavily exploited after you artificially inflate your race completion. Hitting a Lakitu zone will set as many true values to the bit field as the checkpoint containing the respawn zone. So here's the thing, the respawn point linked with checkpoint 0 is often located behind the finish line, meaning it's in front of basically every checkpoint. Therefore, every bit field value becomes true, fulfilling the third requirements of lap completion. <sighs> it's a little confusing, but hopefully that makes enough sense. Unfortunately, this Dry Dry Desert shortcut only has a use in the specific context of Grand Prix Flap, which is totally pointless because competitive flaps only matter in time trial mode. This is going to be a common theme among most of these new shortcuts. But it's not all doom and gloom because the next shortcut comes from Mushroom City and is actually useful. Mathy used a chain chomp while sharply drifting into a central column. There's a Lakitu zone directly above this area which is tied to the pit before the finish line. And yes, the lap counts. Under one oddly specific condition. Another old video from Goomba shows how he immediately dismissed any theoretical Mushroom City skips from being possible, but had a shocking discovery during a live demonstration. You probably could have guessed. What? My value is going up. I think I got... Does it work? Why does it work, my dude? Okay, there you go. That's really early, right? Okay, so this one doesn't work. 25. Go up. See? For some reason, you have to hit the Lakitu zone in checkpoint 24. Neither 23 or 25 allow you to finish a lap. Consequently, the Chain Chomp launch has to occur somewhere in this central area. Unlike Dry Dry Desert, which can only save time on a flap, the Mushroom City Chain Chomp launch is useful in full speedruns of Grand Prix. The same cannot be said about Dino Dino Jungle. 
so a chain shop can be used to spawn on top of the bridge and skip most of the track. The problem is that it skips most of the track, meaning it doesn't obey the 50% rule, so the lap doesn't count. If there was some way to go out of bounds at least halfway through this track, then this could at least be used for another pointless flap in Grand Prix. Well, it turns out there was an out of bounds discovered a few years ago, and it's far enough into the track to build up enough race completion. After performing out of bounds storage, Mathy proved this new Grand Prix shortcut flap was possible, once again in two player mode because why not? Now, I know, the pointless new shortcuts are a bit of a letdown, but don't worry, I've got another useful one, but it's kind of ridiculous. Okay. Like, I've, I've hit, I've hit the, uh, the Mushroom City one so many times, but I, I can still, I'm still not consistent at it, but this one is just so bullshit. Oh. Okay, never mind, it's easy. <laughs> oh my god. This is the Wario Coliseum Super Chain Chomp Blue Shell launch. Not only do you have to get both these items in your inventory, but this shortcut can only save up to a few seconds. This could potentially be used in special cup runs where you always start in Wario Coliseum. Simply keep resetting until you get the desired item luck. With more practice and potential new setups, it might someday sneak its way into a special cup world record. Out of any track since the Chain Shop discovery, Rainbow Road has probably been tested the most. Initially, that cow guy found a Chain Shop launch that skipped most of the spiral section. Uh, it didn't save any time, but hey, at least it worked. The following day, he made not just one, but two out of bounds discoveries. They're each in the same place, but the first one used a Chain Shop while the second method used a mushroom, meaning it's also possible in time trial mode. Surprisingly, you're not going over a Lakati zone, rather you're bypassing one by going directly through this unusually steep section. Cowguy has an ongoing theory that you can pass through any surface in this game so long as it's steep enough. With this out of bounds discovery, Matthew was able to make this possible. Pretty insane, right? What's far more insane is how hard Daisy got wrecked. What's even more insane than that is the setup required for this shortcut to even work. Seriously buckle in because this is gonna get crazy. Start by inflating your race completion by performing out of bound storage. Next, turn around and drive up to where some items are located. Race completion determines what place you're in, so the game will think you're in first when you've really made zero progress. The problem with being in first is you only have access to first place items. Time for a good old fashioned sandbag to get the items that we need. Now drive an entire normal lap to refresh the checkpoint bit field, but keep in mind, time is of the essence. You'll have to claw your way back to first place if you actually want your blue shell to be self-inflicted. Reminder that if you fall off or someone uses lightning, your items are as good as gone. After an extremely stressful couple of laps, it's time to perform the Chain Shop Blue Shell launch. This trick took me, no joke, an hour and a half to pull off using save states. Finally, drive your victory lap to the finish line for a ridiculously fast Grand Prix flap. Along the same lines of Chain Chomps launching you upwards, there was yet another shortcut found in Bowser's Castle. Well, first there was this one, which is admittedly kind of dope, but then there was Bowser's Castle shortcut number four, which sounds like a lot until you realize that's how many Bowser's Castles are in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Seriously, why'd they do this? After launching up to this normally inaccessible area, you can fall into a Lakitu zone that spawns you further in the track. Again, this is totally outclassed by the flop method, but driving around this section is something no one could have seen coming. There's one more track I haven't mentioned with a brand new Chain Chomp shortcut. While the other shortcuts were found within a couple of days, this one was found a couple months later in March. Needless to say, it takes jankiness to a whole new level.
The way this shortcut works is nothing short of miraculous. You would expect this clip to simply lead to an out of bounds, but it can't be out of bounds because you're not placed on the finish line. But if this really is a Lakitu zone, how does it conveniently place you right behind the finish line and count as a lap? For some reason, the entire Lakitu zone for falling off the bridge extends underneath the map all the way to the area beneath this mushroom house. Therefore, Lakitu places you where he normally would for all those times that you fail to stay on the arches. Of course, Mushroom Bridge already has a useful shortcut, but this opens up a world of possibilities for wall clips and other tracks. The funny thing about discovering something in a video game is that it often kickstarts people's interest in searching for other stuff. Allow me to introduce Chompless Mushroom City Shortcut. It's a work, my dude. There's a couple of things at play here. First of all, what is A-Tech? The long answer would require a 20 minute video on its own. The short answer is briefly letting off the gas pedal while doing a mini turbo. The cart will sort of slide in one direction for the duration the A button isn't being held. When time travelers reach a certain level of play, A-Tech is useful for chaining MTs together while traveling in a straighter line than normal snaking would allow. A certain quirk with ATEC is what makes both the flop and the chompless Mushroom City shortcuts possible. Step 1. Do a wheelie. Now, this isn't Mario Kart Wii, so you can't just do wheelies on command. Using the median strip, place the front of the cart over the median while the back wheels are on the road. From this position, perform an extreme version of ATEC, letting off the A button for like a solid half second or something. The cart will slide in a straight direction while maintaining a wheelie. Right as you pass in front of this column, press Drift and the A button to do a hop. The height of the hop correlates to how good the wheelie was, so your best bet is to rip a fatty wheelie. Here's where things get interesting because of a certain property that mushrooms have. Using a mushroom while in midair gives your cart a sudden increase in gravity? Having an increase in downward speed combined with the angle of your cart will cause you to partially clip into the ground. The way Double Dash is programmed, the ground will quickly eject you. This is what ultimately gives you the height necessary for reaching the Lakitu zone. But wait a minute, why is he using that cart? Doesn't look like a barrel train to me. Matthew is using the Bullet Blaster because of its sheer bounciness. Carts have a range of weights from 1 to 5, and the Bullet Blaster has a weight of 1, making it the lightest cart in the game. The shortcut is technically possible with the Barrel Train, but substantially more difficult. Handling-wise, the Bullet Blaster is not too shabby, making it the ideal cart for Mushroom City shortcut time trials. Let's shift gears. <laughs> to the iconic first track in the game, Luigi Circuit. Remember how Checkpoint Zero is the area directly after the finish line? The first requirement for a lap to count is that you're inside of this checkpoint, which is obviously done by crossing the finish line. Well, it turns out that if you had some way to cross in the Checkpoint Zero from a different side, it would still count as a lap so long as the other requirements are met. Matthew took advantage of this exact thing in his Luigi Circuit shortcut flap discovery. He begins by driving an entire normal lap, but turns around right before the finish line. By doing this, every checkpoint bit is set to true. He then sets up for a fake hop, which is the reason he's once again sporting the Bullet Blaster. Much like the median in Mushroom City, Matthew used the slanted surface on the side of the track to set up a wheelie. Once he's up on the ledge, he maneuvers the cart in such a way that he begins the next lap by crossing into the very front of Checkpoint Zero. This only cuts out a few meters worth of track, but it's possible in time trials and has led to improvements in the flap by over half a second. The barrel train is actually viable, since the setup isn't nearly as strict as Mushroom City. But I think I've strayed away from chain chomps for long enough. There's a few other things like a Wario Coliseum flap, more potential out-of-bounds stacking methods, a chompless Dry Dry Desert out-of-bounds that resulted in 6 second flaps, and even some mysterious clip that a second player Daisy using a star did that was never caught on tape. The bottom line is that it appears Double Dash is slowly breaking at the seams. It still upholds the reputation for being an extremely stable Mario Kart game, but considering what a lowly Chain Chomp can do, I guess we'll see what the future holds. I want to give a huge shout out to some of the main finders of shortcut related things. Without their curiosity and talent, this video obviously wouldn't exist. Thanks for watching. Peace.